first step is labs. I'm gonna walk you through everything that I have done and then I'm gonna to try to break it down into by budget what I would prioritize first. So in terms of labs for fertility, there's a lot of things that we can look at. We can look at direct hormone metrics and lab values. We can do ultrasounds, but I'm just gonna walk you through the whole thing. So the first thing I would consider looking at is no matter what your age is, I would look at your AMH. So that's anti-malarian hormone. That's gonna give you an idea of your ovarian reserves. There are people that are in their 20s with a very high or very low ovarian reserve. There's people in their 30s and 40s with a high or low ovarian reserve. But what this is going to do is give you at least some sort of picture of where you're at currently. If you get a low score, it does not by any means mean that you're not gonna have a baby. You only need, of course, one egg to be a high quality egg. It does not measure the quality of your eggs, but it's going to give you an idea of how many eggs that you have. When it comes to AMH, a very elevated level um, also could indicate something called PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, if you get a lab result back that's ultra high and you are concerned, of course, meet with the medical professional and work through the additional lab tests to determine if you have any sort of PCOS. But anyways, AMH, anti-malarian hormone, is a test that I would do as soon as you hear this video. My AMH is about 5.8, which is very high for my age, but it is also within the very acceptable range. So I've also had all of the other tests from intravaginal ultrasound, from my androgens, things like testosterone, checked, and there is no signs of PCOS whatsoever. So I'm 34 and 5.8 AMH. Um, you know, I was super excited about that, knowing that I don't have anything like PCOS. So AMH is the first lab value that you wanna look at. The second thing that I would consider doing is just get a full hormone uh, workup. So you're gonna be looking at, of course, progesterone, your estrogen, definitely throw the AMH in there, but we also can look at things like LH and FH. So these are hormones that are released to um, communicate with the ovary. So that's the second thing, and this is a lab panel. Then we're gonna get into some more in-depth testing, and then we'll talk about imaging. So let's say you get these numbers back, you're really happy with the numbers, or even if you're not, um, if you have the low AMH, you might want to consider you know, speaking with the doctor, as I mentioned, but let's say that you have these lab values back, that's great, and you decide you want to try to have a baby. Here are the things that I've done uh, to really focus on fertility and optimize them. The first thing I think for the foundation of health is a gut test. So I use a test called the GI effects by Genova. It's a stool sample, it's not a very glamorous test, but it's incredibly beneficial. We know that an imbalanced gut can not only lead to things like brain fog and skin conditions, but it can also uh, trigger even autoimmune conditions, leaky gut, Poor gut balance can often be linked to things like autoimmune conditions, which then can also make getting pregnant a lot more difficult. So I really wanted to optimize my gut prior to trying to conceive. A gut test is gonna tell you a whole variety of things. This is a test that you do have to have ordered by a practitioner. So you can go to the Institute for Functional Medicine if you're in California or Ohio, but there are going to be about four to five segments on the gut test. Things like pathogens and viruses, um, dysbiosis, any metabolic imbalances, infections. It's going to test for all of these things and then you can optimize the gut. That would be my second step. So first we have the lab testing, technically third. So AMH is first. If that's the only thing you wanna measure, then the blood work for fertility that we discussed. And then the third thing would be gut testing. If that is already out of your budget, I would really just focus on those three, but I'm gonna take it a little bit further. Um, we know that there's a direct link between toxic burden, environmental toxins, and a decrease in AMH or anti-malarian hormone. Fourth thing that I would recommend is a total tox burden. So the total tox burden, we have a whole video on it. I'll link it uh, below, but it's going to tell you your environmental toxins, heavy metals, molds, mycotoxins, and so much more. So ideally you would optimize all of your toxic burden levels. You would do that through, again, working with a medical provider, but Usually it's something like a detox protocol. It could be as simple as a lot of sauna, which we'll talk about later in the video. Could be as uh, you know intense as EBU, which is high dose ozone therapy, or even something like um, therapeutic plasma exchange, which I just recently did, but that can also reduce your toxic burden. So it depends on how high your toxins are and how quickly you wanna remove them from your system. But I would definitely consider optimizing 
that total toxic burden. On the note of total toxic burdens, we're gonna take a walk through my home and we're gonna talk about environmental toxins and how to reduce them without even testing if you're not able to afford this test. So the next thing that I would look at is your nutrient status. So we know that there are specific nutrients that we'll discuss in the supplement section that can boost fertility. A couple of really popular ones are things like CoQ10, but a NutriEval can actually test your levels of all of these nutrients and then you know how much you have to supplement in order to achieve a optimal value. So for me, I do the NutriEval four times a year. Sometimes if I'm low, I can do a booster shot. Like I recently just had booster shots of CoQ10. Um, you can do an IV therapy to get your levels higher, or you can do supplementation. And there's also a whole list of foods that we can provide a link to that can also increase you know, specific nutrients. For example, if you're really low in vitamin C, you could potentially eat more citrus, or you could take a supplement, or you could do a vitamin C IV. So there's a lot of different steps. Again, considering where you're starting at, how quickly you wanna optimize, and your budget. So the next test that I might consider, again, this is really like going super deep into testing. If you just wanna optimize everything, you can just stick with the first set of tests if you just really wanna get an understanding of where you're at to optimize. But the next test that you could consider doing is a biological age test. So we know that methylation patterns that will present at a biological age test, it is usually better to have a more optimized biological age than of course having a much older biological age. So um, there's an additional test that I'll link. I don't have the box here, but it's actually a telomere test just for fertility. So this, I don't have a ton of data on. This is, we're gonna put it in the like very potential section, but I want you ladies to know about it if it's of interest, um, because I thought it was quite fascinating. The next test that you could consider is an NAD optimization test. So this is gonna tell you where your NAD levels are. Um, we do believe the data still really coming together that optimal levels of NAD are better for fertility. So I'm really excited about the upcoming information on that. But for me, just to be on the safe side, I do NAD supplementation. I sometimes do at home NAD injectables. I most recently just did an NAD IV, but I'm always trying to optimize my NAD levels. So if we walk through the tests and think about everything we just talked about, we have AMH, which is gonna be the ovarian reserve. What does your ovarian reserve look like? How much time might you have in the future? And how quickly might you wanna consider conceiving? That's one test. Then we have just the blood work of the progesterone, estrogen, um, we have LH, FH, that that we can look at. And then we're gonna get into more of these like functional medicine labs, which is going to be the gut test, the total toxic burn test, the Nutri eval, biological age testing, NAD testing. And there's another test, let's just say, you know, your hormones are really um, out of, out of order of sorts. There's a test called the Dutch test, which is this test here. Um, this is a urine test. It's taken over the course of three days. This can really give you a much more in-depth um, look at what your hormones are doing uh, all throughout the day. So this one's really helpful. This you would probably use if your doctor recommends it after seeing your initial um, blood work hormone labs. But we know that having imbalanced progesterone, estrogen can actually cause us to have inovulatory cycles. It can uh, you know, make our um, periods and our menstruation varied, and then it makes it much more difficult to get pregnant. So this is the dot test. This is the NAD test that I'm taking. This is by a company called Ginfinity. We have True Diagnostics. This is a biological age test. Um, this is the Nutri Eval. And then I don't have the boxes here with me for the total tox and the GI effects, but we'll definitely link them in the show notes. Also, I am launching an entire series. We've done a test on the total tox burden, but we'll be breaking down all of these tests in detail with my results, what I'm looking for, and what you might want to look for too. So in terms of fertility, those are the tests that I'm really looking at.